Now, over the past couple of weeks, I have focused on there being many doors on our journey. Many doors, in other words, there are many pathways for us to take in life on our journey. Some of those pathways we have seen over the past couple of Sundays, some of those pathways, they are opened to us by the Lord. And then there are other pathways that we see on our journey through life that lead to darkness. They lead to, to wickedness. They lead to mediocrity. They lead to failure, as I said a couple of Sundays ago. Now, for those of us who are attuned to the spirit, it is something that is not much of a struggle for us to be able to discern, as we saw in my message last week, the differences between the doors. If we are reading the signs on the doors, if we are paying attention to the exit signs, if you will, while for those who are not attuned to the spirit, it could be a struggle for them to tell the difference between the, the many paths that there are in life. And so we read responsibly today from the 16th chapter of Matthew's gospel. We read quite a few verses, didn't we? We read from the first verse all the way down through the 19th verse. And in that passage of scripture that we read responsibly today, we saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees and that they were asking Jesus to, to show them a sign. Ain't that what they asked for? Yeah. And so they wanted Jesus to show them a sign from heaven is what we see there in the first verse. If you happen to be taking a look at that and these religious leaders, they, this wasn't the first time that they had asked Jesus to show them a sign. They had asked Jesus to show them a sign once before and it would come off as if they, if he would show them a sign that they would believe in him, but they had no intentions of, of ever believing in Jesus. They, they had no intentions of, of ever coming to Jesus. They had no intentions of, of ever following Jesus. And so if you're looking at that response of reading in the sixth verse there, we, we read about how Jesus, he had warned the disciples to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And then in the 13th verse, he had asked the disciples, who do men say that I am the son of man? Who do that? Who do they say that I am? And after listening to the answers, we see there in the 15th verse that, that Jesus, he asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? Right. We read all of that. And we read how Peter, he answered that you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. The religious leaders, they had no idea who Jesus was. And the people, they were confused to who Jesus was as well. But Peter, Peter knew the truth, didn't he? And so Peter's answer, his response, it brings me to my key verses for today. My key verses for today will be the 19th verse. I'll take just the 19th verse for today. I'll take the 19th verse for my key verse. And there in the 19th verse, we'll see that Jesus, he responded to Peter's answer. And he said to Peter, I will give you the keys of where? Kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of where? Heaven. And in Jesus, he said to Peter, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Is what we see Jesus say there in, in my key verse for today, which we should understand there that Jesus, he gave Peter something, right? And Jesus, he gave Peter the keys to heaven. As my uncle would say, if he was here today, he would say, my, my, is what I believe he would say. Peter received the keys to heaven. Now, from that verse, I want to focus on, and I want to talk about today for a thought, 
receiving the keys to heaven. Again, my thought for today is receiving the keys to heaven. So what did it mean for Peter here to receive the keys to heaven? Now, in order for us to understand what it meant for Peter to receive the keys to heaven, in order for us to understand the meaning behind it, I believe that we need to first consider what keys do in general. I think that, that, that this shouldn't be a problem for us. I think all of us would have an idea for what keys do in general. In general, we know that keys that they unlock what is locked, right? We know that keys, they, they grant access to whatever it is that is behind whatever is locked, right? So whether it be a lock box, if you have the key to the lock box, you're able to open it up. If it is a car, you're able to not only open the door of the car, you're able to put the key into the engine and you're able to turn on the car and you're able to drive the car, right? If you have a key to a house, you are able to open up the doors to that house if if the house, if it is locked. And so because we have the ability to unlock whatever that key goes to, that key, it gives us a bit of authority, don't it? It gives us authority to whatever it was that is locked in whatever it may be in what is locked, right? Mm -hmm. So we have access, keys gives us access, keys, they they give us the key holder, they give us authority to to whatever the key goes to as well, right? Mm -hmm. Now, while these thoughts of keys may be physical in nature, you know, we think about holding the key physically, right? We also know that keys, they don't just have to be physical, do they? I didn't get no answer on that. So so keys don't just have to be physical. You know, uh, keys, they, when you think about it, keys, they can also be a bit of insight to something. You know, somebody may give you the key to to a code, right? Mm -hmm. You know? can be insight, keys can, can be understanding. You know, if, if someone was to give you a coded message and you didn't have the key to that code, you wouldn't be able to decode that message, would you? Yes. But if they gave you the key to that code, you would be able to decode the message so that you could understand what that message is saying. I don't know if y'all get where I'm about to go with that one, right? You know, I can remember when, when I was in school and I brought up atlases last week. Believe it or not, they taught us how to read maps when when I was in school. Andrew's shaking his head big time, so he got this one as well, okay? <laughs> we, we, we old enough for that one, ain't we, Andrew? To where I remember teachers, they would say, when it came to those maps, and you know how maps they have, icons, they would tell us, be sure you, you, you take a look at the map key. Look at one of the corners. It used to always be in the bottom right-hand corner. They would say, look at the map key. And they would tell us to do that so that we could understand what the icons on on the map meant, Mm -hmm. right? So keys, they they not only grant us access, they not only grant authority as well, but keys, they can give you insight. Keys, they they can, can give you understanding as well. So when we look at Peter receiving those keys from, from Jesus, We could say that those keys to heaven meant that Peter had access to the kingdom of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. We could also say that Peter, receiving those keys to heaven from Jesus, we could say that because he had those keys to the kingdom of heaven, that that he had some authority to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's what we say keys do in general, right? Mm -hmm. Now, along that same line, of what we we know about keys in general, we could also say that because Peter had access to heaven, we could also say that that he was able to to gain some insight to heaven, right? Because he could come and go whenever he pleased. He had the keys to heaven. 
And so he would be able to, to be able to enter into heaven and be able to gain some insight to heaven as well through, through his access. So when we think about the keys to heaven that, that Peter had received from Jesus, we would say that those were some, some very special keys, wouldn't we? To be able to access, for him to be able to access heaven any time that he wanted to? I don't know, that, that sounds very special to me. No, I, I kind of want those keys. What about you? I, I kind of, you know, to go to, to be able to access heaven anytime I want to, and then to be able to, to gain some insight on heaven anytime I want to, I, I would be kind of wondering now, well, is Peter the only one that is able to get those keys? Can, can anybody else, can, can we, can, can, can we get our own keys to heaven? Y'all ever wondered that before? Again, I don't know about you, but I want my own keys to heaven. So let's take a look at this today. Let's, let's take a look at, and let's try to figure out here briefly for a moment, whether or not these keys were just special keys for Peter. Let's figure out whether or not we can, can get our own set of keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now, scripture, for those that may be wondering, scripture actually makes this, this answer very clear to us. Scripture does not try to hide this, this from us. The fact that we can actually get our very own keys. In fact, I would tell you today that I already have my own keys to heaven. Now, for those of you that may be wondering, well, do I have my own keys to heaven? If not, can I get my own keys to heaven, pastor? How did you get your keys? If you're wondering that, let's take a look at what Peter did there to receive his keys to heaven. Once again, there, when we take a look there at that 13th verse again, we saw that Jesus, he asked the disciples about who the people was saying that he was. Now, when we take a look at that 14th verse, we will see that the people being the Jews there, we will see their confusion to who it was that Jesus was in their minds, right? The disciples, they told Jesus that, that the people were saying that, that he was, was John the Baptist. Some of the people were saying that Jesus was John the Baptist, while others were saying that he was Elijah, some were saying that he was Jeremiah, the crime prophet. And then others were saying that he could have been any of the other several prophets that we find throughout scripture. However, when we take a look at Jesus asking the disciples the question once again, we see that Peter answered that Jesus was the Christ. He was the Messiah the son of the living God. And to that answer, we see in the 17th verse that Jesus said to Peter, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this, that answer, that knowledge, that wisdom, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. And Jesus says there, Jesus said to Peter, but my father who is in heaven has revealed that to you, that knowledge, that wisdom, that understanding, that inner sight, if you will, it was revealed to him from heaven, from the father through the Holy Spirit. So let us understand that that what made Peter's answer so special was that his answer was not merely a profession. Y'all follow me with that? Peter's answer was so special because it was not merely a profession, but a confession. And y'all have heard me start speaking about this a lot recently. There is a difference between a profession and a confession. 
You know, some of us may begin to wonder, oh, there's a difference? Well, I, what's the difference? It sounds like both of them are just talking about saying something, a profession and a confession. A profession, I want you to understand today, that is something that is merely said. That is what a profession is. Something that is merely uttered. Something that is merely said. Whereas a confession is made both with the mouth and with the heart. Did y'all hear the difference there? A profession is something that is merely uttered, something that is merely said. Whereas a confession is something that is not only said with the mouth, but is said with the heart as well. What lies within, what comes from the soul. Now, Paul, he explained this thought in the 10th chapter of Romans, in the 9th and the 10th verse, where to the church that was in Rome, Paul, scripture says, he said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, Paul, he said, you will be saved. Again, look at that verse. He said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and then Paul said, and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then Paul said, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see, you need a confession. Not just a profession. You need to confess your faith with your heart. So again, if you desire to receive keys to the kingdom of heaven, I want you to understand today that a confession of faith is required. So in other words, it's not just enough to say that you believe. Your heart must confess your faith if you desire to receive the keys to the kingdom of heaven. You see, again, to remind you, Jesus, he said to Nicodemus in the third chapter of John's gospel and the 16th verse, for God so loved the world, he gave the world his only begotten son, that whosoever believes, he didn't say whoever says, he said, whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Many of us, we get around, we go around and we like to say that we believe. But what does your heart, what does your soul, what does your spirit say? If you truly desire to receive your keys to heaven today, I tell you that your heart, it better say that you believe. Your heart, it better say that you have faith in the only begotten son, not just your mouth. Not just that tongue that you love to flap in your mouth. Your heart better say that you have faith if you want your own keys to the kingdom of heaven. See, that professional faith, that's just not enough to receive the keys to the kingdom of heaven. As we have seen in recent weeks, faith, it requires effort. Faith, it requires us to strive. That's all that God looks for from us. He looks for the effort. He looks to see if you're actually striving to live in obedience to his word. Again, too, too many of us, we say it, but we don't do it. God see you saying, but he's looking for you to do. What are you doing? Are you walking worthy of the calling as we saw in the Sunday school lesson today? Or are you just merely professing that you're about faith? Faith, it requires us to sincerely strive. It requires us to, to put forth some effort. There are many today who truly believe 
that they are going to enter heaven all because they said they believe in Jesus. But in the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel, in the 21st verse and in the 22nd verse, Jesus, he made something very clear that many professed believers need to hear today. And Jesus, he said in the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel in the 21st verse, he said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, but he who does, he who does, that's, that's talking about being active. He who does the will of my father in heaven, Jesus said, that's the one that receives the keys. Then there in the, the 22nd verse, the 23rd verse, Jesus said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name. And Jesus said, I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I reference this scripture all the time, don't I? I reference it all the time because God ain't looking for no professed believer. Uh-oh. Y'all heard me. God, he not looking for the ones that say, hey, I believe in, in Jesus. God, he's not looking for the one that say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. You know those, they love to run around. They'll tell anybody, I'm a Christian. But then, the next second, you look and you'll see them cussing somebody out. And then you have to wonder, well, man, what's going on inside of them? Jesus said, it ain't what about you, what, what, what you put in your mouth. It's what about what comes out of the mouth. Because that confesses what's in the heart. And if what's in your heart is wickedness, Jesus is not going to give you a key to the kingdom of heaven. I hope that was not simply heard today. I hope we are attentive to what was just said. You see, the Lord, he desires sincere faith from, from, from us today. And again, we have seen over the past couple of weeks, Jesus said that he is the way, that he is the truth, and, and that he is the life. He said that no one comes to the Father but by me, Jesus said. We have also seen in recent weeks that Jesus said, I am the door. He said, if you want that door opened up, you have to come and knock on the door. Again, you have to strive by faith. You have to be committed in your heart for that door to be open. And again, we see here today that when that door opens, we shouldn't just stand there and look at the one that opened up the door because the one that opens up the door will have a question for us to be able to enter in. And that question is going to be this. Who do you say that I am? And depending on your answer, he's either going to let you in or he's going to say, no, nah, I can't let you in. Who do you say that I am? Is the question that must be answered today in order for one to receive the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Many have professed to believe, but their heart, when that door is open, it is not going to confess Christ. And therefore, they won't receive the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So this is something that is very important for us to know and to understand today. We said that we desire to receive our own keys to the kingdom of heaven right there at the start, right? When I said, I don't know about y'all, but I want my own key. What about y'all? Y'all said, yeah, I want my key. What is it that lies within your heart today? Now, when we confess our faith in Christ, when we do that in our hearts, we will receive, and again, I want you to pay close attention, attention to what I just said. We will receive. Okay, we will receive our keys to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus will give us our very own keys to, to heaven. 
Now, what are we supposed to do with those keys once we get them? We wanted them so badly, but what else are we supposed to do outside of going in? Because many of us say, well, now that I got my key, I can go in, right? You know, many of us will get our key and it's time for us to celebrate. It's time for us to party. And hey, there ain't no shame in that. You know, when Jesus gives you keys to heaven, you better be excited. <laughs> you, you, you better be happy. You, you better be rejoicing. If you ain't rejoicing and, and you have keys to the kingdom of heaven, I'd be looking at you like you're crazy, wondering what's wrong with you. Now, I don't want anyone to think that I'm about to rain on their parade because we should be throwing our own parade. But once we receive our keys to the kingdom of heaven, Jesus has said there's something else that we should be doing while we are rejoicing and while we are celebrating. He tells us that there is something else that we should be doing here today. Now, we we'll see this when we take a look at Jesus again, giving his giving Peter his keys to the kingdom of heaven. We'll see it there in my key verse. Where Jesus, he said to Peter, he said, whatever you bind. And I want you to understand that he's talking about using the keys here. He, he just gave Peter the keys to heaven. And he's essentially saying that whatever you bind with those keys to heaven that I just gave to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose with those keys that I just gave to you, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, some of us, we may look at that and it may sound like a riddle to us. It, it may not make much sense to us at first. But what I want you to understand there is that Jesus is saying with those keys, you have access, you have authority with those keys. That's what he just said there for us. He not only said that we have access, he not only said that we have authority, but he also said that we have some insight as well. Verifying all that we spoke of earlier in my sermon. Now, what is it that we can loose? What is it that we can bind? That means to tie up or to set free. What is it that we can tie up with those keys? What is it that we can set free with those keys? Now, that question there, it plays into the thought behind Jesus warning the disciples earlier in this chapter about the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You may not see it yet, but to the Galatians, Paul, he wrote that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And we saw where Jesus, he warned the disciples about the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You see, leaven, when we look at it spiritually, when we look at it in scripture, leaven is seen as something that is not good. Leaven is false teachings, false actions. Leaven is something that can cause sin to grow in oneself. Leaven is seen as causing sin to not only grow in oneself, but causing sin to grow in others through, again, false teachings, again, through actions that, that betray the word of God. So to the disciples, we should understand that Jesus, he was speaking to the, how the religious leaders through their actions, through their deeds, they were hindering those that were around them. They were causing sin to grow in all of those that were around them. If we remember the 23rd chapter of Matthew's gospel, and you can turn over there if you want to see this scripture for yourself. In the 23rd chapter of Matthew's gospel and the 13th verse, you may recall where of the religious leaders, Jesus, he said, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. He said they were. And why was it that he said that they were hypocrites? Why did he lay this woe to them? 
He said, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Pay close attention to that. You shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Then he said of the religious leaders, you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering, who desire to enter in, you don't allow them to go in. He's talking about entering, accessing heaven. You see, the religious leaders, they were supposed to be key holders to the kingdom of heaven. The religious leaders, they, they were supposed to have keys to the kingdom of heaven. They had access to heaven. They had authority to heaven. They were supposed to have insight to God's kingdom. You see, this access, this authority, this insight, it was given to them through his word. The his there I'm talking about is God. But the religious leaders, all they did was go around and they would say, but not do. They acted irresponsibly. They were irresponsible key holders. So rather than open up the gates to heaven, Jesus said that, that they shut up the gates. They shut up the kingdom of heaven. They, they should have been ministering the word of God and living by the word of God to open up that door. But they was, again, saying and not doing, and they were just shutting the door. I want all of you today to understand that all of us who are key holders to the kingdom of heaven, we must, again, understand that we have access to heaven, that we have the same authority to heaven and that we have permission, insight to the kingdom of heaven. And so because we are carrying the keys to heaven, we should understand that we carry a great responsibility. Do you realize that you carry a great responsibility today if you are a key holder to the kingdom of heaven? You see, all of us, we must understand today that the key that we carry, it doesn't give us permission to, to be the master over anyone. We aren't supposed to be the judge over anyone. We aren't supposed to be the ruler over anyone. We aren't the dictator of one's fate. You see, the professed believers, they like to go around and they like to act like they can dictate to people. Like they have a say over one's fate. That is not what has been given to us. The keys that has been given to us is the scriptures. The keys that have been given to us to the kingdom of heaven is the word of God. We have access to heaven through the word of God. We have authority to heaven because we have authority to the scriptures. We have insight to heaven through, again, the scriptures. We have insight to heaven through the word of God. And so we should not act irresponsibly when it comes to the word of God, should we? We have to be careful in how we not only teach the word of God, we have to be careful. We have to be responsible when we live by the word of God. The last thing that we as sincere believers ought to ever do is betray the word of God. I don't know if you understand what I mean by that. You see, Jesus, he said of his word in the eighth chapter of John's gospel, the 31st and the 32nd verse, if you want to turn over there with me. 
Jesus, he said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. He said, and you shall know the truth. We have insight because his word, it abides with us. And Jesus, he said there in that 32nd verse, he said that that truth, it shall make you free. And Jesus said there. So I want you to understand today that that God's word, his keys, they are able to free those that are locked up in the chains, in the shackles of sin. So if the keys to heaven, if they set us free from the shackles of sin, shouldn't our goal be to use our keys to set those who may be shackled in sin? Shouldn't that be our goal? Shouldn't we take our key? And if we see our brother and, and our sister, not in Christ, but mankind, if we see them shackled in the shackles of sin, shouldn't we take our keys, go to them and loosen those shackles? We shouldn't take those keys and then make sure that the shackles are locked, should we? That don't sound very responsible for us as believers to do. In fact, that would be rather selfish of us to, to take those keys and make sure that the, the shackles are locked real tight. It would be even more selfish for us to, to take our key and then say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to hold on to these keys just for myself. Why would you put forth all of that effort and say you desire the keys to heaven? Why would you put forth all of that effort for Jesus to give you the keys for you to turn around and say, man, I ain't going to use these keys. I'm just going to hold on to them. <laughs> you went through all of that effort of seeking for that door, knocking on that door, then confessing with your heart Christ is the only begotten son of God to receive your keys. You went through all of that effort just for you to go, man, I'm going to hold on to it. For you not to even see what who's in need of freeing and not even go up to them and say, hey, you want to be set free? That would sound mighty bad of us. But what if I told you that there are many today who are going around and doing just that? We say that we want to go to heaven. We say that we want the keys to heaven. Jesus said, oh, okay. And he gives us the keys for us just to do nothing with the keys to heaven. Such thoughts, they remind me of when Jesus shared the parable of the talents to the disciples. We, that should be a parable that, that we know fairly well. If you don't know that parable, you can find it and the 25th chapter of Matthew's gospel. But I'll sum that parable up for you to where there were servants and there was a master. And in that parable, the master gave three servants bags of talents, which is bags of money. You know, and, and one got five, you know, one got just a few less and then one was left with just one bag of money. And the one that received the one bag of money, which I will equate to the keys of heaven, didn't do anything with the bag of money that he got from his master. He went and he buried it. He hid it in the ground. Didn't do anything with it. I repeat to you. Imagine that somebody giving you a bag of money. You didn't even do anything to earn it. They just gave you the bag of money. How many of us just going to take that bag of money and not do anything with it? How many of us going to take that bag of money, free money, and just bury it down in the ground, never to be seen again? And then when the master came around, he said, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know how you are. And so so I, I, I took the money and I, and I hid it in the ground. I, I, I guess he thought that the master was going to smile and laugh along with him. But the master, if you look at that scripture there, the master turned around and said, 
Man, you're wicked and you're lazy. You could have at least deposited the money so that it would gain some kind of interest. You could have did something with what it was that, that I gave to you. What do you think God is going to say to us when he has given us his keys, the keys to the kingdom of heaven, for us to turn around and say, hey, you know, I, 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 I was too afraid to use my key. I, I didn't do anything with it. I, I, I put it on my bookshelf. I, I put it in my closet so that it could collect dust. I, I left it on the table. Others, they can come in and they can see my keys sitting there, but, but they don't touch my keys. They just sit there. I didn't do anything with it. I, I, I put it in the side of a dresser. And again, the keys, they, they again are the scriptures. I want you to understand today. They are the word of God. There are many who have their keys out for decoration today and they just collect dust. There are many Bibles that's collecting dust today. There are many Bibles that still, you know, when you get a new Bible, how shiny the pages look. There are a lot of those that still lying around today. They ain't old, they ain't dingy, they ain't start to color. That's what Bibles do, you know, when you start using them a whole bunch. You know, they start wrinkling up. You have wrinkled pages in your Bible. If, if you like me, your Bible will start to tear up. You'd be done turned in it and, and used it so much. You know, I love to see those kind of Bible carriers. You know, I know that they're doing something with theirs. I know that they're they using their keys. But my hope is that you don't use it just for yourself. Because again... We as God's children, we carry a great responsibility, not just for ourselves. We carry a great responsibility for all of those that are around us as well. All of God's children, I want you to understand today, we carry this great responsibility, not in our hands, but in our hearts. Because that's where the key is. That's where they really lie. You see, with his keys, Peter chose not to be like that servant in that parable of the talents. Peter, as shared in the second chapter of the book of Acts, Peter, he, he used his keys on the day of Pentecost when they were delivered to him by the Holy Spirit. We saw it in the Sunday school lesson today. The Holy Spirit gives us gifts, but the Holy Spirit also gives us the keys to the kingdom of heaven when we are of sincere faith. And so Peter on the day of Pentecost, he cried out for everyone to repent. He cried out for everyone to be baptized in the name of Christ for the remission of sins. I want you to understand today that with his keys, Peter, he proclaimed the name of Christ. Christ. And, and he preached for people to receive their own gifts from the Holy Spirit. And again, the only way that you're going to receive gifts from the Holy Spirit is if your faith is true. If you have confessed it with your heart. And so in proclaiming the gospel to the people, not just that day, but throughout the rest of his life, we should understand that people, that Peter, he opened the gates to the kingdom of heaven. He opened the doors to the kingdom of heaven. He did the complete opposite of the religious leaders who were shutting up the kingdom of heaven. And so with that in mind, you have your key, if you're of sincere faith today, I ask you, are you shutting up the kingdom of heaven today or are you open up? Are you opening up his gates? Are you opening up his doors? What are you doing with the key that you have received from Christ? That is what I want to know. Are you walking worthy of the calling? Are you living to your responsibilities as a child of God? Are you living up to your responsibilities as a sincere believer? Or are you walking around in the world today as just a professed believer? 
Again, I remind you here what Jesus said in our key verse today. Whatever is bound, whatever is chained up on earth will be bound, chained up in heaven. Whatever is loose, whatever is set free, whatever is freed from sin on earth will be loosed, will be freed from sin in heaven. You see, those that are set free from sin on earth, they're going to be running around in God's heaven free from sin as well. God is going to judge and he's going to free those who are free from sin in the world. He's going to let them run wild in his kingdom. That'll be the time for us to really rejoice. That'll be the time for us to really throw that parade. All of us are going to shout and jump all over God's heaven. But if you chose to disregard if I come up to you with a key and I say, I can set you free from the shackles of sin. You say, no, nah, I'm good. I'm having a wonderful time. If you foolishly say that to me, not understanding what it is that you're doing when you don't want me to set you free from the shackles of sin, God is going to determine and he's determining that right now today in heaven, he's going to let you stay there in those shackles. You will be bound for eternity to the shackles of sin. Again, I tell you today that we have so much insight to share. We have that insight to share with all of those that are around us. We know that there is a door, a door that leads to life in the pasture, a door of salvation. We know that the one who opens up that door will ask the question, who do you say that I am? We know the confession that must be made so that one can enter in to that life. So why aren't we letting somebody somewhere know? Why aren't we putting forth that effort to let somebody somewhere know? We have a great responsibility with the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And it is time for us today that if we have keys to the house, it's time for us to share our keys with somebody somewhere. As we saw in last week's sermon in the ninth chapter of Proverbs, there are maids to the house of wisdom. And we today are those maids who should be going out into the highway and say, hey, I know where you're trying to go and I have the key there. I have the insight. I have the, the decoder of the message. And I have a message to share for you. Stop going the wrong way and go this way. I know the way to the house of wisdom. And that is what we are supposed to do. We should not withhold this insight from anyone. We wanted the keys. Jesus gave us the keys. And with those keys came a great responsibility that you and I as sincere believers today, we must live up to those responsibilities. When we use our keys to heaven to free those who are in the shackles of sin today, I tell you, they will have the ability to receive their own keys. And when they receive their own keys and when they do as we do, they can set others free. And there can be many running free from being a slave to sin. And I believe that that's something that all of us should desire. We should desire for nobody to be a slave to sin. We should desire everybody to be a slave to sin no more running free to the kingdom of heaven. So now that you know that those keys to heaven, now that you know that they come with a great responsibility, I ask you today, do you still want your keys to the kingdom of heaven? And I hope that your answer will be, yes, pastor, I still want my keys. And if you still want your keys, I ask you, will you use your keys to the kingdom of heaven? And again, I hope that your answer is yes, pastor. Yes, I will use my keys to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. 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 Thanks for watching this week's sermon. I hope that you enjoyed this sermon and that you'll be able to apply what you have watched, that you have heard, that you have listened to, apply it to yourself and then share it with somebody somewhere. And if you haven't done so already, Make sure that you're following the Newfound Faith channel. Be sure that you're following today 
so that you don't miss a sermon, so that you don't miss a Sunday school lesson, a Bible study, or a food for thought. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you share the Newfound Faith channel with someone somewhere.